Ja. Tolle. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to the RB Palace. Palace. Unaangalia yeah. <laughs> palace? Bas. Tafadhali. Wow. Uh, Isabidu kai hapo. This is what we call fine living. <laughs> si utakunywa juice kidogo, si ndio? Oh, juice sawa. Glass ni safi, eh? Mm. Fine mm. living. Yes, this is the RB Palace. Mm. Mm. Freshly squeezed juice. Freshly squeezed juice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know Kusumbo? Freshly squeezed. How's your day, my brother? Amazing. It's been a long day, man. Uh-huh. Uh, how many hours are awake? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty hours. Uh, As you answer, you talking to ice? You talking to ice? Uh-uh. I was at Nikulev. Ah, uh-uh, fine living. When you come to the Arab house, mm. you just don't live like an apology. <laughs> Mm. So I said, "Ulata kama ugosa." Nipembele. Mbili eh? Mm. So shikilia kileta leta hapo. Hiyo ni kwanza. Ah. Fine living. Yes. Fine living. So karibu sana. Thank you for coming. Mm-hmm. Um I know you're a very busy person. You, you've been awake since I think 3 a.m. I had to cancel class to be here. Okay. Wake up zito. But thank you for coming. Thank you so uh, much. You had a good day. It's been a good day. But what is your take also? What wana piga makelele huko nje sana? Na watu shi no na amani. Wa 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 wa. The political situation right now things are different uh, definitely not looking good. No, I can't lie to you but uh, uh we've been in worse situation than this as a country and I know it's just some a bit of turbulence that we are will be okay. Free. We will be fine. Let's love one another. We will be fine. We so, will yeah. be fine. At the end of the day, uh your neighbor will still be your neighbor. Mm. You are your brother will still be your brother and Kenya is the only place we have so that's Shikili it. Apo, Bas. I have a show to start. Answer show. Enjoy your juice. Sawa sawa. Mm. Where do you enjoy? Fine what? Fine living. Fine living. Mm. Watch at once the show. <laughs> the RB live show brought to you by Golden Pal Properties on Beedwood Suites. Hello people, how are you doing? Welcome to the RB Live Show. It's good to see each and every one of you. What you need to do, please share this on your wall. Tell all your friends to join in. Uh, tell your neighbors not to disturb you. Get your bundles together. Uh, put your headphones if you're, not, if you're in traffic. But let me tell you, this is the place to be tonight. Share this on, on your wall. Tell all your friends to come on. Tell, tell them to join in because you are, we are going to have hell of a bumper show. Let me tell you something. Uh, about two weeks ago, uh, I was having lunch with my bishop, David Moredi, and um, he, he showed me a video. And this video had privileged and underprivileged people who had been told to line up and, and they had to have the same race, uh, they had to do the same things, and they had to win. And, and, I, and I, it got me thinking, hang on a minute. So the privileged and the not so privileged are on the same race. So I know some of you are at a place where you feel not very privileged and you wonder, how will you win the race? And the people you're competing against are actually very, very privileged, you know. And today's show is about that. And the RB Live show here, we're about putting the S on your chest, you know, the Superman kind of thing. Let me tell you something. Um, you are at a place, your life has dealt you uh, some bitter pills. And you feel like, oh, my dreams are too big to come to fruition. Nothing is going to happen. And you feel, you know what, others are better than me. Others are in a better position. They have good support structures. But I don't have... Have. let me tell you do not lose hope in fact I, I can tell you this without butting an eyelid that after this show then you can make a decision and I can bet my bottom dollar you'll make an absolutely positive decision you know there's some things you must say no to self-pity there's somebody somewhere feeling oh I'm at the back of the line I want you to understand if you say no to self-pity let me tell you something you will conquer mountains that you never ever thought possible. What you've got to do is just shut your eyes and see it with the inner eyes. You know, that vision, that thing that you want to come to fruition. What I'm going to tell you right now, your physical eyes may see obstacles. Your physical eyes may see 
huge mountains that you cannot surmount. But there comes a time you close your eyes and decide that I'll be blind to those physical mountains. I'll be deaf to those um, uh, voices of discouragement. And see that thing. You could be at a place of self-pity. Say no to self-pity. To defeat. You know, defeat. Uh, your physical eyes can see defeat. And you can see, oh my goodness, this way it's coming. But when you close your eyes, you turn defeat into victory. You cannot give up. Because... Some people give up right on the edge of victory. You know, so many that have given up, if only their eyes were illuminated and they just were shown at the point they gave up, that's actually maybe two steps or you're a day from your place of victory or your place of manifestation. So you who is about to give up, I want you to straighten your back tonight and say, you know what, I'll fight it one more day. And tomorrow again, if you don't see it really happening, straighten your back again and say what, one more day. I don't know. You've heard the voices, even sometimes the people close to you tell you, or the situations, you're, you're born somewhere. Uh, I was born in a village called Buhalalire. But I said no to limitations because people will tell you, can anything good come out of Buhalalire? Some of you come from a village that we can't even pronounce, that even maybe you're scared of pronoun pronouncing in front of people. But let me tell you something. You who may think is disadvantaged because the people around you seem to be flowing with a lot of advantages around them. But I want to tell you something. If you surmount that thing from inside, you say no to self-pity, that warrior spirit, that thing of saying uh, everybody is better than me. If you're told you are the first of the line, you even remove yourself because you think everybody else is supposed to come in front of a line. That is self-pity. You who want who, the defeatist mentality. You're defeated even before you start something. Please share this on your wall. Tell people, I mean, there are people who you know who are very discouraged and I want to check people who are, are streaming in. I see... Uh, well, I see all of you coming in. I see Vincent Wanga. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Just keep on sharing this on your wall. And, and uh, anybody who you think is facing some um, lavender, Liz Wambua, saying, I will not give up no matter what. It's hard, uh, Sarayamo, but God, but God, I am a fighter. Thank you, Frida Riongo, for watching. Thank you, D Doreen. Uh, thank you, Branch Olive. Towet, thank you. Please share this on your wall. Let everybody, let everybody, sorry, we, we are sorry about the, the, the small interruption, but we are sorting it out. Thank you, Lydia Cheng. Uh, Alf, Alfred Abundance, too, oh, you're saying too much interruptions. Please, we are sorting it out, and we will be okay. Manal Real says you want motivation tonight. You will get it without batting an eyelid. We tell you, you will get it. Uh, Mamake Char Carl Chris, I declare I'm a victor against all odds. I will not give up. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we apologize. Yes, I know there's interruption, but it's being sorted. Well, we'll also give a dinner for two today. We have dinner for two here at the, at the Ventana restaurant. An amazing, an amazing place. You will love it. Let me tell you. Uh, we'll tell you how you're going to win that. Um, a dinner for two or lunch for two, whichever you prefer. Uh, we'll ask you a question, and whoever gives us the most creative answer will be able to have those tickets. Uh, thank you so much. I see um, Esther Womboy, uh, you're watching um, Evans Ababu. We are back now, guys. Our interruption has been sorted. Uh, we see Evans Ababu, you're watching. Christian Zesh, thank you very much. Um, please keep on sharing. Tande Shalin, thank you, thank you. Uh, keep on, keep on sharing this on your wall because somebody somewhere requires today's show to just have a kickstart uh, because they are, they are fainting in hope. They are about to give up. They are about to say, you know what? I'm throwing in the towel. Uh, remember, the Beadwood Suits, we thank you. Our sponsors, Beadwood Suits, we do have, of course, Golden Pearl Properties and Giraffe Ark in Mwege and Nyeri. Please, if you want to have your meals, uh, the Ventana Restaurant is the best place to be. Of course, if you want your properties, uh, get in touch with Golden Pearl. Giraffe Ark, a good place to go in Nyeri. You can get in touch with them on 0702278722. Thank you, guys. But tonight, I want to tell you, we shall have the one and only Felix Duor. Maybe some of you do not know who I am talking about, but most of you know him as Mze Jalango Munyewe. He will take us through his journey. And, and it's, an, it's an amazing, an amazing journey. Will, um, and, and through his story, I am sure he'll be able to encourage some of you. The art of saying no to no. Jalas, 
How are you doing, bro? I'm good. Uko salama? Mm. Juice inaendelea namna gani? Just enjoying the fine living. Fine living. <laughs> you know, you just don't exist. Mm-hmm. Fine living is a word. I'm telling you. Thank you for coming to the RB residence. Thank you. Uh, so we appreciate. Thank you so Mishkuru much. Sana. Thank you so much. Now, many know you as Jalas. Jalas. Felix. Yes. Who is Felix? Felix, who's Felix? Felix, oh my God. Hmm. Where do I even start from? Who is Felix? And Felix, to... Felix, I am. Um... Okay, can I help you? Mm. You know, many people see you, glitz and glamour. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows Jalango Monyewe. Tell me about Felix the fisherman. <laughs> the fisherman. Yes. <laughs> People don't know that story. That was back in uh, Homer Bay when I just completed my high school. Uh, and uh, Capital Fish was uh, the only company then in Homer Bay. It's closed now. And uh, every young man was hoping to get a, a job at Capital Fish. So just like any other young man before I joined college, before I joined college, yes. before I <laughs> hoped to have a joined college, yes. I decided to join my fellow friends and uh, uh, schoolmates and other people that we grew up with in Homa Bay at Capital Fish. So we went to Capital Fish, we were uh, selling fish, we were fishermen, we were everything to do with no. fish was but us. Uh, you yes. mean you're going to the lake? We used to go Una to the lake. Unavua Una kamna, una uza, things like that. Then sometimes you go to work into the factory. The factory we were paid 160 shillings per day. And uh, that was good enough then. And that is if you get a chance to get into the company at least five times a day, you'd have 800 shillings per week. If per you week. work on Saturday and Sunday, you'll double your pay, which was coming to 320. Yes, but it was not easy to get into the company. So you had to bribe your way sometimes in there because that was the only hope for all of us young men in Homer Bay. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's, it was an Israeli company and uh, a lot of the work we were doing, anytime somebody is not asking for your certificate for any job, just know that it is job that needs strength. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a, <laughs> yes, if somebody does not, if you just hear yeah, no certificate needed, just know that you are either going to load, offload, pack, <laughs> carry, throw, Push, pull, and that's all. So that's what you used to do. How that's long did you do that for? I did that for almost one year. For one year, a whole year. Then uh, I, you know, that that one year gap that you always have before you join college you know, or something. Yes. I'd uh, performed, uh, I would say, well because I didn't get a chance to go to the school that I loved. When I finished my primary school, I was called at Maseno School. And, so uh, why didn't you go to Marcelo? I, I could not. <laughs> it's a long story. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, long time eh? uh, before before you joined the school, there was a, a chance for you. You receive your calling letter and a toll report on this day. So by the time we were planning to put money together and go to from one to Marcelo school, passed. the time had passed. So when I, the day I went to Marcelo school with my dad, I was told that my chance had already been taken. That was a week later. And that was the first time I ever saw my dad cry. As I left Maseno school, carrying that box with a uniform, and I left. So I went to a school called Barkanyango Secondary School. Barkanyango. Barkanyango. That is in, uh, in Imbo Center. But hang on. What did that make you feel, seeing your dad cry? Is there something that... Yes, 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 yes. He told me, you know what? I'll have to make him smile one day. I'll have to make him smile one day. It gives me the chance to struggle and accept the situation that, uh, you know what, I was not able to pay for this. This is not what my parents can afford. So why not? Let me go to where my parents can afford. So uh, I went Barba. to Barkanyango Secondary School, okay. P.O. Box 17, Nyamunye. Okay. So P.O. Box 14, Nyamunye. So we went there, my dad carrying my box, and I'm, I wearing my Seno school uniform in a different school that was not, because they could not get even money to buy me new the new uniform for the school. So they accepted so, you just like So that. they accepted me for almost three weeks when my dad got the money. He bought you the uniform. I bought, he bought me the uniform, and I started going to Barkanyango just for one year, first time before now. Barkanyango became even more expensive for him. So I went to Nyangoma Boys Secondary School where I finished my... High school. High school. Yeah, Nyangoma Boys is not one of those schools you can say that, you know what, <laughs> anything can get, <laughs> you can get anything from here. You just struggle things around and uh, 
hope that things work hope out. For the, hope for the best. Uh, you hope for the best. And right? in all that, in mm. all that journey, you mm. know, you are Navua Samaki. Mm. You're doing all these things, mm. and you're seeing your dad break down because mm. he didn't give you what you had qualified for yes. in as far as yes. paying the school yes. fees yes. for yes. Moseno. Yeah. In all that, did you think of coming to the big city? <laughs> it was not even in my dream. So, uh, let me take you through this. So after this one year at Capital Fish, I uh, went and told Dad everybody was leaving for college, all my class, because I'd got a C plus. Mm. I had a D plane in maths, uh, a C, a D, D, D minus in chemistry, D, D plus in physics, A in CRE, A in commerce, A in history. So. All my A's and D's put it together. C plus. <laughs> Brought me to C plus. <laughs> so I qualified to go to a college. I, did, I wasn't good in maths. The only time I ever performed well in maths is when I stole the maths paper. I had all the answers, <laughs> but I still got 42. <laughs> with all the bokeh? Yes, with all the bokeh, but I still got 42. You understand? So I told him that, you know what, I need to go to college. My dad has never laughed like that. <laughs> you didn't think it's possible. He, he, he laughed so much. He told me, boss, you've seen what I've gone through. I trying to pay college. to pay your college. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? How can you even think about college? Because dad used everything. So every single why do you think about it? He couldn't pay your high school fees. I just thought that maybe somewhere, you know, parents have their one way or another. I'd also give it him a, a whole year to be planning to look, for the money. to look for the money. You see? Yes. Yeah, so my dad would pay school fees with almost everything. You see, he'll bring firewood, he'll bring maize, he'll bring... And my dad is those parents who embarrass you. Assembly, you don't know, Nakuja na Maindi, my friend. You, you're wondering, could you wait for everybody to go to class yes. first? That's when you can come with this maze. But I saw my dad struggle to have me go to, through school. And uh, when he told me that he was not able to pay for college, I said, mm -hmm. you know what? It's fine. it's fine. Let me look for other ways of making things work. So I went straight to Kitale, to my aunt, where she had a small bakery mm -hmm. for selling mandazis and stuff like that. And you worked there? I worked for my aunt. So people were seeing you now. Many didn't realize you were selling mandazi. You know, I know the whole of Kitale like the back of my hand, because I used to supply mandazi on a bicycle. We used to make the mandazis in a place called Machinjoni. From Machinjoni, you come to township. From township, you come to Central Line Moja, Gibson, go all the way to St. Joseph. You're delivering? Delivering every single shop, every single shop on a bike with 10 crates How on much were you earning average? I was not earning anything. I was... Doing it for the family? I was doing it for the family and I was eating at my aunt's place as I looked for something else to do. Fast forward. Mm. Well, you eventually came to Nairobi. Yes. One day, my dad woke up and told me, boss, here's... Your money go to college. He gave me 800 shillings, two shirts and two trousers, and told me, go be a man. 800 shillings? Yes. Go to college? Yes. That's fair? School fees? He, he, everything. Go just, sort yourself just, out. just go and be a man. And you came to Nairobi? Yes. Did you get a culture shock? I mean, what was your... No, no, no. I'd come to Nairobi earlier now for but two now, days because of a lady I really liked. And their school had performed really well at the uh, drama festival. Yes. So she had invited me to come over. And that day I took a bus, came to Nairobi, uh, saw her and went back to the bus without seeing any other thing in Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared. Eh? So 800 shillings yes. from your dad. What was his name again? Eh? Your dad's name? My dad, Edward Kothil Tucci. Edward mm. gives his son yes. Felix yes. 800 shillings. Plus two shirts and two trousers. Two shirts and two trousers. Yes. Son, go be a man. Yes. Of course, you didn't come by flight. It was by road. By road. That long journey. Mm. What was your game plan for Nairobi? I didn't have a game plan. So where did you land? All I needed was to show up. So where did you go to? I had an auntie of mine who used to live in Nairobi mm -hmm. for some time. She had lived. She was living really well herself. So I went and lived with her for some time before I left. Okay. Because when you live with, with the, also this well-off people, mm -hmm. they have restrictions and things about it. Yes. You. And uh, the situation that I was in was not going uh, to allow me to to be confined. I wanted to make my own. So I left and we went to live with my uncle. He's called Uncle Jared. Okay. Ocheng in uh, <laughs> Mukuru Islam, Suko Kwari, Mbakasi. Mukuru Islam. Yes. But there's also, when you came to Nairobi, of yes. course, yeah. um, there's this story you used to go to Kenya National Theatre. And that is, that is uh, a bit later. A bit later because when I went to my uncle's place, mm, I tried odd jobs. Because everybody at Embakasi knows one destination. 
is the industrial area. Yes. So we went. I, I think I've knocked several doors and several gates. Went with my ID to a thousand and one gates at industrial area. But then I knew what my purpose was. I knew what was good for me. So all this time my uncle used to give me when I don't get a job at industrial area, he used to give me fair. So you are rejected in some places? So many times. Did you ever think of going back to Homer Bay? Or those let me tell you one be thing. a man while let, me, let, me, let me tell you one thing. The words of my father when I left Homer Bay were the only encouragement I had. Be a man. There was no going back. There was no going back because there was no one even to look up to. The only people you're seeing around you are losers. That's why I always say, if you can't beat them, arrange to have them beaten. You don't <laughs> join them. You might be joining losers, you understand? So, uh, so many times I wanted to go back. But those words? But they kept on ringing that, you know what? So I went and joined the National Theatre. Rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed. But even at the National Theatre, rejection a thousand and one times. Because we had veterans who already knew how what acting was and for you to get a chance in the big groups we had planets theater we had Jicho four productions we had theatrics arts and everything so i never knew that one day i'll get a chance to perform ladies and gentlemen this is a man we we are now talking about felix the man <laughs> rejected so many times mm -hmm. uh, even for odd jobs in the industrial area, he was rejected. Yeah. Uh, at the National Theatre, mm -hmm. before you big, you were rejected. Yes. So you kept on saying no to no. No to no. You must always say no to no. One day, the, we were doing the set books. And uh, I'd, never, I'd never thought that, you know what, I'll ever get on that stage. So the day one, students are packed. And this is a show... People have been rehearsing. I was shadow casting. I was not in the main cast. Yeah. So in case somebody gets sick. Sick. So the Felix show was comes. big. First day. So the guys were paid. And I think one of the main actors went drinking. So the next day, students are packed again. And this guy doesn't show up. And uh, the teachers kept on asking, please, you must start now. You must start now. We are getting late. So they asked who can take his role. I said, me, I can do it. They said, you... You had never done it before? I'd never done it. They'd never seen me perform. I said, me, yes, I'm able to do it. They told me, you're lying. I told them, try me. Then I went on stage because they didn't have a choice. Teachers were complaining. And I did my first narration ever. Burali, thank God, that role wanted somebody who, it was an emotional role, eh? It needed somebody who could take emotions. I took that role and when I was crying on stage, it was not because of the role. I was just telling God, why have you tested me this far to bring me to the throne one more time? I went on stage and that, I became the best narrator, Swahili narrator at the National Theatre for the longest time. And that main guy was told never to come back in that role. It taught me a big lesson. When you get an opportunity, give it the best, like your first, your only chance, and your last chance. Coach Daz from the U.S. says 80% is to show up. Yes, you showed up. up. Showed up. So show the people up. who maybe you've been rejected very many times mm -hmm. and you feel like everything has come to a standstill and you, that's where self-pity comes in and you're not, you're not uh, uh, coming on for the chances. If you were wallowing in self-pity, you'd not have showed up. That is the last thing I would ever do. I work hard not because of where I'm going to. That is where I come from, my friend. <laughs> wow. It's where I come from. I don't have a chance to be lazy. I don't have a chance to, be, uh, to pity myself. I don't have a chance to look back and regret about things. I will say yesterday was yesterday. The mistakes yes. of yesterday are for yesterday. My situation today is not my situation tomorrow. All right. Mm. Now, uh, we have this green suit you have and this funny shirt that <laughs> looks like a curtain. Yes. Uh, born out of <laughs> pa Papa Shirondla. No, 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 not really. In my first episode of Papa Shrandula, I showed up wearing the clothes my dad gave me. Is it? Yes. What? If you can go back and watch, I'm wearing a blue, blue shirt, blue striped shirt, and a, a blue trouser. 
That's what you were given when you told you be, yes. a, be a man. Go and go to college. So you had a major role? No, 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 no. Papa Shandula was was uh, another opportunity that <laughs> you know Papa Shandula had started and we me and Otoyo, my best friend, had yes. been asking ourselves, how do we get how do we get to this big thing? How do we get to be this big? We spoke to Papa, we spoke we spoke to Will Brother, they told her just 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 wait, eh? Yes. We're just starting, eh? We still don't have so many roles. Then one day Will Brother has to be married mm-hmm. and his relatives have to come from Oshago to come and to be part of the celebration in Nairobi. That is when we get the call. Papa calls uh, Papa called me and Otoyo. We sat at a restaurant and told her, now there's this role you guys have been asking for. It is just a one episode role. You guys will show up as from Shags. Uh, uh, from Shags. And uh, after the marriage proposals, you guys will go home and uh, we shall see how it takes from there. I told Otoyo, listen, this is the chance God has given us again. When those cameras roll, whatever we will do on that screen, these people will regret or love and ask themselves why they ever got that chance to us. So Papa is actually the first person to ever call me Jalango. Papa Shandu, they told me, so you'll be Jalango, you'll be Otoyo. Just simple like that. And we said, you know what, let's go. And it was just for one episode? One episode. Okay. Was it a major role in that episode? No, no, it was just coming and presenting presenting uh, our case to our in-laws and that was it so we said you know what this is it when the cameras rolled Burali when the cameras rolled that was it the script had to be changed that oh when everybody was going back home Jalanga and Otoyo jumped through the, the the windows of the bus and they're still somewhere in town they had to keep you they had to keep us around and that is to encourage somebody you know, so many are called for what you call insignificant roles. Yes. And you say, no, I'm too big for that. <laughs> Not realizing sometimes mm. the window is what gives you access you to the one. palace. Uh, I always see so many people, you tell them, just come and start somewhere. The first thing they ask is salary, how much are you being paid and everything. I just wish they could know how many people even just wish to get in only. When you get in, you have the opportunity to meet everyone else who is already inside. So don't stay outside with the pride. Get in. And fight from within. And fight from within. So you have this knack of just showing up and saying no to no. Show up, show up, show up, my friend. But yes, okay, so we've seen the fisherman. We've seen the so guy in the actor, uh, Kit- want. Kitale yeah. taking uh, <laughs> Mandazi. Mandazi everywhere. And then you've come in the area, yeah. they rejected you, yeah. but you kept going. Mm. You went to National Theatre mm. and you kept going. Yes. And then Papa Shirandla. Yes. We've seen the actor, the fisherman. Yes. But we also know you as a radio presenter. Oh. And before I go to these recent ones, mm. you got into Kiss. Yes. Did they call you? Did they poach you? Uh, Kiss announced a lot of things were happening then. Papa Shonul has just picked up, Nyambani has left Kiss, and now people have been called to, uh, to replace Nyambani. Mm-hmm. I showed up. They were asking for our qualifications that I didn't have, but I showed up. So you weren't knowing, you don't qualify? I don't qualify. But you just showed up? I showed up. Were you I crazy should. or just determined? No, I, I just thought to myself, okay, what's the worst that can be done to me? Let me just go and also see what it takes. What it takes. So, so you went there? Yeah, we went there. And guys were cut out, cut out, cut out, interviews, cut out. And they were asking for the qualifications? Yes. Fast forward to you when yes. you got there. Yes. So, of course, they, want, they expect you to have some photocopies of your certificates. I told them I don't have, but I'm the person they're looking for. And? They thought I was crazy. And Caroline Mtoko laughed. Patrick Kwako, one man I respect too, laughed. And guys were, guys were thrown out. And they told me, let's see where your confidence gets you. So when we were left... Now you're standing, you have no qualifications. Yes. You're standing in front of Patrick Kwako yes. and Caroline Mtoko. Yes. Those two alone can make even the qualified person shake in their boots. Yes. But what's the worst they could do? Caroline Mutoko is one person who does not look down to people. Yes. Forget about the person that. you see. I know that. If uh, there's this thing about her that is amazing, she knows what she wants. Mm. And when she spots it, 
she gets it right. So when people got, got into trials, we were left around 10 people. Akina Marangi, Akina Hu, so many people, others with their degrees and everything. So Caroline was going on there with different people all the time, different people all the time. And you'll be called, told, come back, go, come back. So so many people are dropped. Let's go to you when you went on air with Caroline. Uh, no, we, I didn't go to on air first with Caroline alone. Uh, okay, the first day I went with Caroline on air was my first time. She told me, speak. <laughs> uh, do you remember your father's words? Uh, 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 yeah, I just told her, uh, where I come from, women do not shout at men like that. <laughs> she thought I was crazy. I told her, just relax, uh -huh. we will do this thing together. Uh, just uh, don't worry. <laughs> you get it. So, so after a long trial, we were left with Larry. After months of trial, we were left with Larry, two people. Yes. And uh, that day, we were called and told, you know what? These are your letters of employment. We've decided to employ the both people. of you. The same day, my mom called me and told me, Dad has passed. Yes. <laughs> so your father yeah. wasn't alive to experience your son calling yes. and say, Dad, I'm finally becoming a man. He never lived to see it. Um, what was your immediate feeling? Oh, man. He never lived to see it, eh? But, uh, so his life. Mom called me that day and told me, uh, there's this home theater that my brother had been asking for for a long time that they wanted at home and everything. So he told me that, you know what? Ah, forget about that home theater. You need to come home. It's so naughty. Why? Uh, Dad did not make it to the night. So that was it. That's why even when I was starting work at Keys, it took me one more week to officially now begin. Because I had to go bury my dad. And, uh, the man who said, be a man. Yeah. I think he waited until he knew that, you know what? My son is... This is it. So, yeah. So... It was a very hard time for me. Mm. Uh, but I had to dust everything back, go back on, on air, and make my mom proud. Because I got the message from my dad. He asked me to, he told me things would be okay. But he told me, make sure that your brothers go to school. And your younger mom, brother. Uh, and your, my younger brother, my sister. And my other bro had dropped out of school because of school fees. So, and he told me, make sure your brothers go to school and uh, you get your mama house. So the first thing was actually to get mama house. So slowly I got my mom some piece of land. I built for her house and uh, embarked now on taking my brothers to school. My brother Locks has already finished school. Oh. George has finished, Dan finished, and my sister they finished. Kept and, the yes. And once they had gone to school, that's when I decided also to go back to school. Yeah. There's a story about one of your brothers who graduated. Look, he didn't believe it when he had the gown. I was away for the weekend. He didn't remove it for two days until the day I, w I came back. He walked in, he saw me, he was wearing his gown. He kept his gown on for two days? Yes, and to wait for me. To see that, you know what, I made it. I'm graduating. Yes. And you made it possible? Yeah. <laughs> what were his words to you? Or what did you tell him first? I told him, it's, it's fine. It's a face, pass it. <laughs> yeah. Just look at that, look at your camera. What? And encourage somebody who feels, you know what, all his support structures are gone. Like the call you got, your dad is gone. <laughs> it, there are two things that somebody can do. Either fight it's called bittersweet. You can get both to the rough end and to the best end. 
when either of it happens to you. It should just dust off and continue with the struggle. There's never space for giving up. You don't have to. You're not living for anyone. It's for you to make a legacy. It's for you to... It's up to you. That's life. And the opportunities out here. Opportunities are like a bus. There's always another one coming. So don't give up. Just don't give up. Don't give up. Kiss, of course, you went on to host a show with, of course, the very talented Alex Mokido. <laughs> uh, what happened is uh, before we hosted the show with Caroline for almost five years mm -hmm. together. Five years? Yes. Five years, yeah. Then uh, one day. And I, in all these journeys, you're picking something. Yes. Of course, you're picking Learning a lot. Talking. Learning a lot. The opportunities that I've had working with the best of the best, Caroline Mutoko. Mm. I speak highly of her because she mentored every single step. And I can't even go anywhere without talking to her. She can actually attest to that. She's an amazing woman. That leader. even the, after I don't know how many years, I call her and she picks. And I ask her, I'm about to do this. Is it okay? I actually call her. Even before I moved to Hot 96 the other day, I called her and she told me it's a big gamble, but I know you. <laughs> Go do your best. I think what I, what I get from what he's saying mm -hmm. is through life's journeys, when you get somewhere, don't forget the people who held your hand. Yes. And, may, and, and don't just look for people who tell you what you want to hear. No. That is the worst thing. So you moved and to... And I've suffered it. Uh, I suffered uh, so much from um, psycho fans and people. You know, back at home, you need a father figure to talk to you. Yes. But I have some of my uncles who cannot tell me anything. Because they know that in one way or another, I'm their support system yes, in yes. one way or another. So they can't tell so me the cold so, so, so they don't come out and tell me the cold, the cold side that, you know, this is right, this is wrong. Oh, yes. Lest I maybe stop helping or doing mm. anything. Either say, ah, Uncle Burale, uh, ni chocha sana na ni ni aribia. So yes. some of them just want to tell me the things. I tell them, no, tell me the Be truth. Be real with me. Be real with me. Yeah. Be real with me. If you have friends who also do not tell you, when you're messing up, it has not been good. I've made a lot of mistakes. A thousand and one mistakes. A thousand and one mistakes. So not everybody who laughs with you is really for you? No. Well, I hope somebody's learning such lessons. No. Uh, don't no. just go for psychophants. You must have somebody who somebody tells, you tells you the, the truth. truth. And they will say, if you have five friends, who can stop everything that they are doing? For you. To come to where you are. Let's say, Burali, you're sick today. But you have just five. If you can count five people, who can stop everything that they're doing and say, Burale is sick, I'm going to see them in the hospital. Five, you're very lucky. It's true. You're very, very lucky. I was admitted in the hospital. There's some friends I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I showed up, did I? Yes, you yeah. came and saw me. Big Ted came and saw me, you know? Yeah, hey, a few yeah. people who showed up. Hey, but but there's were... something major that had happened to you mm. and for you. You actually emceed the World Cup tour. The trophy tour. And it was not in Nairobi. <laughs> that was Uli in South Africa. Uli Pandandege. That was in South Africa. The first, the first time I ever flew out of the country. Now, the trophy tour was here. That is 2009. Mm -hmm. 2009, uh, it's a big and a major thing. You can remember uh, the first time the World Cup trophy came. Yes. It has come now twice. But only the president is no. allowed to touch it. Uh, yes. 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 So, uh, Chris Kirwa gambles with me as an MC. He had never seen me MC some anywhere, but I said, you know what? I don't know how to do this thing, but I'm not gonna tell Kirwa that I can't. So I'll just look for a few things and a few people, how they do it, and hit the stage. So I was paired with the DNG, one of the biggest hype men in this yes. country. So when I got on stage, man, I did what I was watching and just did my best. And I think one of the top cock presidents was around. And he said, I want that guy to be the MC in South Africa. So I've never left the country. I've never Do you have a passport? I don't have a passport. Luckily enough, Otieno Kajuang was the minister for immigration. For immigration. God rest his soul in peace. I went to his office that day. 
but I had already made a name. I was Jalango, I was yeah. hosting Kiss, I was hosting everyone. Yeah. Yes. But I never thought that, you know what, I really needed a passport. I went and told Otieno Kajuang, the minister, uh, I have a journey in two weeks. You need a passport? I need a passport. He told me, Jalango, these are things that you don't get in one day or two <laughs> weeks. Eh? I told him, you know what, you are the minister. We used to call him Nyakwara Nyakwamba. Nyakwara Nyakwamba. Uh, yeah. He told me, he, he made one call. And I'd already prepared all my documents. That guy came, he went down. In 20 minutes, I had a 48 pages. In 20 pass. minutes. In 20 minutes, that guy went down and came back with my passport. I don't know how he did it. Sometimes it's good to know people. Uh, you know, <coughs> yes, 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 yes. But you even must know people. <laughs> you must know people. But even as you're watching, mm. uh, you're watching, um, if there's any of you who is watching mm. and there's somebody who is a father figure who maybe one time told you be a man, be a woman and there are words that have carried you through to your levels of success or, or just like Jalango you also have people like Carol and Mutoko who uh, have mentored you. Mm. Uh, tell us anybody who has done that for you in your life and here at the RB live show we would like to celebrate them so please just keep on giving us their names um, everybody's saying uh, Rosemary Nyoro watching from Moy Airbase and she's very encouraged Evelyn Muniafu big up Chris Kirua really uplifting the young people more blessings uh, Vereso Vereso says favor uh, Ekobayan Nyaboke says, very inspiring. Richard Kigoi says, I remember days when I used to meet him at Kenya National Theatre and drove, and you drove a blue starlet. Yes. His rise was not uh, quick. Uh, that's why he managed to stay at the top by constantly reinventing his act. Richard Kigoi, thank you. And Richard, the starlet. Yes, and, 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 and uh, uh, Richard Kigoi says hello, and I think he lost his mom. Uh, sometime may your mom rest in peace. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mwalimu Owenga Bakari Jalas, my guy all time. Betty Rono watching from Germany. Uh, please tell us about these heroes that you have in your life. Uh, keep the questions coming. Keep the questions coming, guys, please. Uh, uh, Sambo Daniel Msembi saying, uh, ask Jalango to recall that first KNT act. <laughs> uh, so please, guys, uh, okay, Jalango. Um, Faraji Kevin says, when I resigned from my job at GBS TV, Jalango is the one man who stood by me and kept encouraging me both morally and financially. We know each other while I was in high school and he's always been a good friend and a brother. God bless you, brother. This Faraji can. Yeah, yeah. And you see, you bless this person and this person is the one who's been recording my naked truth and doing mighty things. Yeah, yeah. So just the way others did for you, you're also doing for other people. You know, give back. You've given much. Wow. Give more. Please, guys, keep on, keep on sharing mm. this on your wall. And what I ask you to do is uh, give us the names of these heroes in your life. Because here at the RB Show, we want to celebra uh, celebrate them. Uh, Ken Kumbura is saying, kindly, I honor my sister Rose Ngasha from Kochia and uh, Engineer Mesha Kidenda's family. Please keep on. Pastor Fred, Margaret Osogo says, Pastor Fred picked me from the dumps of despair. God bless him and his family. Uh, Michael N. Jenga says, Bernard Muhi and Jenga is that guy for me. Uh, please, uh, Victor Moradime, my mom, my mentor, she never gave up on me even when I could not believe in myself. Uh, please keep on sharing these heroes. Please, um, Faith Vata Musilu, salute Jalango. This is moving and encouraging. Please, uh, uh, Lydia Kagu Kagunya, uh, my hero, I celebrate you, Cecilia. One boy, please keep on. Uh, Arab Samuel says, Big up, Jalango. You're totally inspiring very, very many people. And please give us the names of your heroes, and, and we shall be able to, to celebrate them here at the RB live show. You know, and, and um, you got to understand you must have the voice of a mentor, you must be so tenacious that you will say no to no. Isn't it? So please give us, give us your names, give us the names of the people who you are celebrating. Tell me as an MC, radio presenter, actor, mm -hmm. what is your most, now I want to go a bit light, what is your most embarrassing moment? Wow. Share this on your wall, guys. Please share this, share this on your wall right now. My most? Embarrassing moment. My most embarrassing moment. Eh? I think when I urinated. <laughs> you did what? I urinated. Where? Uh, on my neighbor's clothes. <laughs> on, a, on a neighbor's clothes, my Why? friend's neighbor. We had a party. It was on the third floor. Yes. And uh, we had a bit uh, too much. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I went to the balcony and I thought we were on the ground floor. 
only to realize that the clothes were huko chini huko. So yes, yes, it, I think it's an embarrassing moment. And as an MC? As an MC, wow. I, uh, oh, as an MC. Mm, I think I jumped a very important part of the function. Of the function. And there was no going back to that. I've tried to make my name off that from that company, but uh, it has been hard until when they didn't have a choice of an MC again. They called you. They called me, and they've called me seven times again. You know, also blundered one time. Mm. I called. I was in a corporate function, mm. and I called the MD with another name. What? They have never called me again. Uh, it's it's always bad. <laughs> it's always bad. It's always bad. So guys, keep on sharing, please. Um, uh, Jack Asio, my Jack, my hero, Jalas, mm -hmm. your story is touching. Mm -hmm. um, Wali Muyumbu, powerful, a great inspiration to many youth and much more. Beatrice Wanjiko says, I love you, Jalango. God continue to bless you. Thank you. One last thing. What keeps you humble? Very, very quickly. Poverty. Poverty. I can humble you in every single you fear point. poverty. Hey, my friend. My friend. Like it's just like you, those you Kenyan know. athletes. You know, they don't train at you oh, really like hard. Uh, they don't train that really hard. It's poverty they fear. But by the time they look back and see where they come from, poverty, my Bio. friend, be your two. But but you know here the RB we live what it's mm. called fine living. Fine living. I need to give you some food. Mm. Let's eat, my guy. Let's eat. Let's eat. Let, let, let me get you some food. It's what <laughs> called fine living. What did you prepare? Are you married? Are you married? Oh, what's about your story? Okay, You're in my sir, show. Okay, Ask sir. me in your show. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I want uh, first. What would you hear? Mm. Uh, you know, this is uh... <laughs> <laughs> the first time this thing was brought to me. You did what? Oh my God! I don't want to tell you. <laughs> Hapa, do you know the first hotel I ever ate when I came to Nairobi was uh, Intercon? And you thought that is what? Intercon. I ate at Intercon. The first hotel I ever ate. My uncle was a chef there. Underline oh, the word not chef. That, not that you paid. Uh, no, underline the word chef, Roger, not Roger. cook. You know what this is? Mm. Eh, eh. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> so my uncle was a chef, not uh -huh. a cook. Mm. Chef. There's a very big difference between a chef and a cook. Being a lawyer is a, a cook. A cook, I can experience a matanga. Uko shago. Chef. Has gone to school. <laughs> so a chef wears a uniform to... Prepare a meal. A cook removes. <laughs> <laughs> Just a big apple. <laughs> hey. Papa Sasa. Mm. Oh my God. Any fish? Mm. You know. Father God bless this food before we take it in in Jesus name. Amen. But first, Amen. before you eat, eh? uh, before you eat, what is I it? want to give somebody d dinner also at the Ventana oh, restaurant. Oh. You know, to, to school to pick it. Now whoever at a, won, at a, at a, at a oh Michael Jenga celebrates uh, uh, Bernard Muhia, mm. Umendelea, mm. Margaret Natali celebrates mm. Pastor Fred. Davis Nyakundi celebrates mm. Alfred Abundance. Mm. Uh, Lily Luther celebrates Reverend Josephat. Mm. I need to give somebody this the dinner for two. We went to Kidogo. How, how do you like it? Mm. Because how? Some choice. <laughs> or bung choice. Or what? All the choice. <laughs> <laughs> you know here it's fine living. Yeah? Mm. I need that. Uh, mm. And, and where is, where is um, Juliana? Juliana, I need my gifts for Jalang. Where is Juliana? I need Juliana, please. I need Juliana. What gifts are you giving me? Fish. Yes. Fish is good. Thank you, Alex Wajambiri Bishori. You like the show? Hello. Oh, thank you so much. This here at the RB Live show. Oh, we don't want you to go just like that. Mm. We give you a nice cup. Mm. You know, thank you for uh, for for coming. Ah. You know. This is beautiful. And and there's there's an extra one for you. Mm. Uh mm. Uh, I, I want, I'm just waiting for Juliana to tell me wow. who has won. If not Juliana, can Gaban to tell me or something? Uh? <laughs> thank you guys. Um Andrew Alovi, I see you're watching. I say hi to the muscles, my boys. Thank you so much. Andrew Alovi. Alovi himself. Uh, one guy who I really He's love. He's a good so guy. Much. Uh I need somebody. Okay. Uh, Lizzie Sang says, enjoy your meal. Um, uh, Chris Atemo is watching. Uh, Anu Wakim, thank you. You're watching from the United States. Mm -hmm. Murungi Mamake. Mm -hmm. Jalango, you're funny. Love watching you from Dubai. Mm -hmm. Becky Masika says, Reverend Kenaringo deserves to be celebrated. He has mentored me. 
and so many others to be better. I know Reverend Ken, uh, Ken, Ken, uh, Ken, uh, Ken Ringo, uh, great uh, man. Evan Sababu says, this is one of the best RB show. Thank you, Mr. Evan Sababu. Enjoy. That's that unit one. Mm. Uh-huh. You won't show me a lot. Do you watch it, Wapo? I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> Your uncle was a what? I was, was a chef. Was a, uh, was not a, a cook. Not a cook. You see, mm -hmm. we have the difference between hotel and hotel. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> hotel has menu on the wall. Mm -hmm. Chai dogo, chai kubwa. <laughs> hotel, uh -huh. the menu is in a book. <laughs> uh-huh. Mm. And? I'm telling you, my friend. Mm. You see, a cook. Hotel where you have a cook. <laughs> so the question is, tell me. Cook and I get a last of plus. I'm going to go It's okay. Mm. I love you and respect you. Cook. cook. The question is, mm. tell us something that you want, you know, your vision, something that you like, mm. you know, mm. and, and, and uh, uh, tell us what you want to do in life, and whoever gives us the most creative answer mm. will give you lunch for two of the Ventana. Okay. Mm. Another place that has fine living. I Are you, you enjoying the fish? This is nice. This is nice. What is your greatest lesson in life, even as you enjoy your fish? My greatest lesson mm. is that if you want to be poor, uh -huh. buy a very big mattress. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem? Buy a very big mattress. And sleep. <laughs> sleep, do not wake up, do not even move from your mother's house. Mm -hmm. mm. Complain about everything. Mm. Complain about your parents, complain about your job, complain about your salary, mm. complain about everything. I'm mm. telling you, within, within a very short time, mm -hmm. you'll be poor and it will be okay. You need to like you're saying she's going to sell her mattress. Christine <laughs> mm? mm -hmm. Byron. Hey. I celebrate my husband, Mr. Byron, Auntie Marcy, and my spiritual parent, Pastor Jimmy, mm -hmm. and Pastor Marcy of House of Grace from Guy. Mm -hmm. So there's hotel and hotel. Mm -hmm. Very big difference. So the question is, tell me, and, and let me ask the question, because I need to give somebody dinner, mm -hmm. or lunch for two at the Ventana restaurant, a place that has amazing, amazing food. Um, tell us a vision you have, something that you want to do, and nothing's going to stop you. And the most creative answer, whatever... Uh, the people that uh, decide, the, the team decide, mm -hmm. where was the best and most creative answer, you get lunch for two at the Ventana restaurant. And of course, I also want to thank uh, Golden Pearl um, Properties and Giraffe Ark Lodge in, mm -hmm. in Nyeri. An amazing, I've slept at Giraffe Ark. You need to you go need, there. You need to take me. No, you need to go there. Mm -hmm. You uh, need to take me. I will take you, don't worry. It's a, an amazing place. Good rooms, horse riding, kill like The place is heavenly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If my father wakes up and finds me on the back of a horse yes. <laughs> with juice in my heart, <laughs> he will say, You have become a man. And then he will Shuka, shuka, shuka. <laughs> shuka, shuka, shuka. <laughs> I need an answer to whoever. Um, so we will go to Giraffe Ark. Huh? We'll go to Giraffe Ark. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. You'll love it. Um, Mike, okay. Michael Saoke says, I want to be an author one day. Grace Polster, enjoy your dinner, guys. It's delicious. No, this would find living at the RB mm -hmm. place. Eh? Mm -hmm. You know? This is healthy, yeah. It is very healthy. So who cooked this? Your woman. All right, we have a winner. Okay, Pastor John Buru, thank you. You celebrate your mom and your dad who work tirelessly to see you where you are. Mm. The winner for dinner or lunch for two, dinner if you're a hopeless romantic, for two at the Ventana restaurant at the Beetroot Suits is Margaret Natalie. Hapa unajua kikula samaki. Una enjoy muziki pole pole. Unafanya kichwa ivangeli hivi tu. Rumba. Hapo tu. Think sa kichwa kidogo. What are the things I'm doing? All of our kings. Hey, hey, hey. Hmm? Hmm. See what's up? All of our kings. Good manners. Hey, what? And tell that people don't talk <laughs> when they're eating. This is soup. Eh? That is soup, yes. Hmm. Hmm. Can you host me next week again? <laughs> no, don't worry, I'll call you for breakfast. <laughs> Someone is saying full of gandhi. The RB Live Show brought to you by Golden Pal Properties on Beatwood Suites.